Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. We got an active weather day ahead of us. The threat for flash flooding and a small end risk for severe storms across the Carolinas. Let's get right to the details. We'll show you the wider view. It's felt like spring here in the Carolinas and sure enough, like spring, we've got a spring-like storm system. There's not much winter weather at all with this, though we will talk a little bit about that at the tail end of this. But this is a pretty massive low pressure system that's heading towards the Carolinas today. You can see this system um, off to our west making some steady progress. We're kind of a, a little bit of a hybrid wedge here, which is keeping us a little bit cooler than yesterday. But you can see the massive low pressure and look at this line of warm, humid air ahead of it with strong thunderstorms moving in. I'm going to quickly show you the, the, the temperatures just to show you how warm it is ahead of this system. I'm going to turn off the satellite imagery just for a second here so you can see how much warm air is surged up ahead of it. And again, most of these temperatures, you know, currently are in the 60s and even 70s to our south. Across the Charlotte area, we're generally in the 70s. But as this warm, humid air surges in from the south, that's going to set the stage for what's heading our way. So this morning, believe it or not, is the calmest part of the weather today. I know there's some showers out there, some fog, but this is the light stuff, the real heavy, more consistent stuff is going to be coming in this afternoon. Let's quickly look at some of the severe weather parameters. I'll pop those up real quickly. This is the severe weather outlook for today. You can see the low risk. And again, I'll turn the radar off just for a second because I want to show you what's going on. But you see that risk, the low risk extends from the Gulf Coast regions, Florida Panhandle into the Charlotte metro area. So this is a low risk right now. And again, it's for damaging winds, but there is a small non-zero tornado risk. I'm not going to shade around that there is a small risk of tornadoes i'll show you that probability real quickly um, again that green is the two percent probability for a, a tornado within 25 miles so yeah there is a small risk mainly because that front's in the area you got to remember what these fronts do um the front i'm glad the front is displayed on here the winds are coming out of the south here they're coming out of the northeast here and sometimes the north so any storms that can form along this front tend to have the potential to spin a little bit so that that lines up with the front and then down here where the low pressure is coming in from the south, you see the lightning data still popping up. So we've got that severe weather risk, obviously, today. There it is. But that's not the only risk we have. We've got the risk for flash flooding as well. I'll show you that real quickly. This is the flash flood risk, which you could see the, the yellow is the moderate or medium risk, and the green is the low risk. So that's about a 5 to 15% chance of seeing flash flooding. So there's a twofold issue, flash flood risk and severe weather risk. So let's get right into Futurecast, everybody. All right, here we go. We're going to dive right into the future cast here. You can see the system. We've got light rain, drizzle, mist. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's going to be raining at times early today, but it'll be hit or miss, drizzly kind of stuff. As we get into the afternoon, this is 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. We'll stop this right around 4 o'clock. You know something interesting happening right here. What I'm talking about is we've got some kind of wave of storms here, and we've got the front here. So to me, this tells me this is actually probably the warm front coming north. This is the cold front Maybe the prefrontal trough, the main front might be back in here. But I think up until this point, we're going to be stable. We're not going to have issues with severe weather. But as we get towards about 5 o'clock, this line of showers and storms starts moving in from the south. We've got to keep an eye on that one. That's 6 o'clock. This is 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. So there's going to be an evening burst of storms right there that we're going to have to watch very, very carefully pushing in from the south. And then we go into the overnight hours. There might be another surge of moisture coming in with what looks to be the main front. So maybe the main surge of moisture coming in there. So one line of severe storms possible right around, I'd say, let's go five, maybe four o'clock at the earliest to about eight or nine, and then we get a lull, and then maybe another line of showers and storms, less severe, but still something to keep an eye on in the wee hours of Sunday morning. But on the back side, I said there's a little bit of wintry weather with this. I'm going to talk about this. On the back side of this, we go into Sunday morning, we're going to see a changeover at some point to some snow, some colder air coming in on the back side. And I will tell you that oftentimes the models that mishandle this, there is going to be snow in the higher elevation starting Sunday afternoon, possibly into the evening hours. And this could be a good little burst of wet, heavy snow that transitions to more of a powdery snow as it goes on into Sunday night and Monday. So there is going to be a burst of wintry weather on the back side of this. Just want to point that out. But let me show you the overall 48 hour evolution of this you could see this this is a spring-like storm so let's talk about some of the parameters the tornado parameter i'm going to go through time here <clears throat> we'll go through this is nine hours out into the afternoon into the evening hours see that that first surge of storms right there there's a little bit of instability and enough for maybe an isolated tornadic storm but it's not off the charts that's not crazy high so i'm not really concerned but it's actually the overnight hours into sunday morning there's more of a consistent batch of 
STP, what we call significant tornado parameter, but nothing on this, this chart here is crazy. The only part that is a little wild here is maybe the Midlands of South Carolina, and that's an area down here we'll have to watch maybe mid to late afternoon. So let's show you the, the storm tracks as well, which we call the helicity tracks. So remember what this, this is, this is basically um, the rotating storm track. Doesn't mean tornadoes, by the way, just means the storm has rotation in it, which often is severe, sometimes tornadic. You can see the tracks as we go through time. It's not crazy high. So uh, the tornado risk is what we call non-zero. What that means is it's not zero, but it's also not super high. I'd say it's in that one to 2% range right now for our area. And if I go back to the, the future cast here, uh, I can clearly see that the two waves that I would be worried about for tornadic storms would be right here, this line coming up through Columbia. But the good news, I think for us, the later it gets, it might stabilize just enough. So there is a small chance right there. I actually think, like I mentioned, I think these are the storms I'd be more worried about for folks in the Midlands of South Carolina. Those to me, and then close up to the line here, uh, around three, four o'clock this afternoon, that to me is a bigger risk for tornadic storms. And then you see the whole line kind of push through and pretty quickly. So yeah, it's January and we're talking the risk of severe storms. A uh, quick look, I'll take a quick look at the tornado, uh, tornado, NATO cast, we call it, to see what it looks like as well. I'll show you that. So real quickly, this is obviously what we call the NATO cast. And it kind of shows you, it takes all the guidance and puts them together. And you can see for the Carolinas, uh, there is this, you know, look at the bottom, the brighter green is a 2% um, or a, a 2 to 3%. So you're looking at a 2, 3% probability. So it's not really concentrated, which is another sign that maybe it's a little disorganized. But again, looking at this, I, I definitely I'm going to keep my eyes open. I'm going to watch these storms carefully. The radar will be something to watch this afternoon. But as we go through time, I think it's all going to be what happens with that first batch of moisture. And again, just from a timing standpoint, uh, later this evening into the five, six, seven o'clock time frame. Of course, I will post any updates throughout the afternoon. Make sure you have your phone uh, on and have those alerts turned on just in case, especially the further south and west you are in the upstate of South Carolina into the Midlands of South Carolina. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. And again, make sure you're just paying attention to the weather as we get into the evening.